Leadership Resolution number two, engage through storytelling. Think back to a time that something was really hard in your life. Think back to when you might have struggled with something personally or even professionally. Now think about the wisdom that you were able to internalize in the midst of that time or maybe after that time. Think about how that wisdom was offered. Did you take in wisdom and a new understanding through a PowerPoint slide that was jammed full of text so small you could barely read it? Or a presentation that was full of 150 different graphs? It's unlikely. Neuroscientists have discovered something that religions have known and politicians have known and marketers have known since the beginning of time which is that our brains take in information best in the form of story. Now, especially in times when there's higher stress, but really any time it is that you really want to make a point or make a difference or help people understand something, storytelling is the way to make it happen the most effectively and to truly register in people's hearts and souls and minds in order for them to take action. So how is it that you can tell a good story? Well, that's a subject for a whole presentation or a whole workshop, but I want to give you a couple of tips that you can start to put into play right away. Before you think about trying to make a point, trying to convey some important information that you've already internalized and explaining the end, the, the conclusion that you've come to after this internalization, after really wrestling with the material, before you try to convey that conclusion to either people that you are working with or who are working for you, or even, even within your family, think about a way to start with a story. People can put up their defenses when they are being forced to take in a conclusion that you have already reached because you've had the time with the material. But when you start with a story, all ears are on you. So here's a couple of ways to go about that. The first is to think about it truly as a story. There's a character in that story and that character meets a conflict. Conflict is the necessary ingredient for any story. There's some kind of a difficulty that you have to push through. So start with that difficulty. Start with that moment of anticipation or that moment of dread. That aspect that all of us can relate to. And don't rush through this either. This is the other piece of it. You want to describe that moment. Describe what it is that you see, what it is that you feel viscerally on your skin, in your body, what it is that you hear, what it is maybe that you can taste, what it is that you can feel. Don't go about describing your feelings, I was afraid or I was, I was anxious, but instead describe with your five senses what it is. Describe the environment and its impact on your body. Describe the situation and its impact on your spirit and your soul. When you can do that right away, people immediately take note. They know what it feels like to be in this world in their bodies feeling fears, feeling anticipation, feeling anxious, being concerned. They'll be concerned for you along with you if you're the person that's the character in the story, but they'll be concerned about whatever character it is that you're talking about. So think about a character and a conflict as a way to start that storytelling process. And then make sure that right away, you're describing simple components of the five senses how it is that you see, you hear, you feel, you taste, and you smell. Seeing is the thing that everybody describes, sometimes hearing, but those others are often left out and they add a particular texture and engagement to the story that will bring people into what it is that you're trying to say and help them ultimately then, as you follow along in that journey of your story, follow you along on that journey as well and perhaps come to a similar conclusion. Now, the key with storytelling, and one of the reasons it's so compelling is that it engages the listener in a way that the listener has to wrestle with the content, him or herself. So you want to tell a story that allows that listener to engage. You're not giving them too much 
You're not giving them too little. There's a little bit of an art to all of this as well. Now, the second point to make, we've already talked about starting with character and conflict. And actually, we've talked about describing what it is that's in that environment and how it is that you're responding to that environment or that situation. So those are two things. The third thing that we'll talk about now is keeping the pace of that story going. There's a couple of things you might want to play with, and it depends on your audience, and it depends on the length of time that you have to talk to them. You want to move a story along. You don't want it to be drawn out too long, but you also don't want to rush through it. So you need to figure out a little bit of the pacing. And one of the ways that Nancy Duarte, when she analyzed some of the most effective speeches, looked at Steve Jobs introducing the iPhone, looked at Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech, is that they go back and forth between possibility and challenge, possibility and challenge. So you're looking at a high point. You see a way, you see a way down the dangerous path, but all of a sudden that way is blocked. But then you come up with a solution and you follow that solution, but all of a sudden you come to a dead end. Now you can make this much more compelling in the context of your own story and the own thing that you're describing, but can't you see already how your listeners are going to want to come along for the journey with you. Now, you're certainly leading them in a certain direction that you want them to go, absolutely. But you want to give them enough latitude to be able to engage with that story, engage with that material, so that ultimately they feel like they reached that conclusion themselves. Now, here's a tip after those first three points of effective storytelling. As a leader, once in a while, make that your own story. Make that your own story of fear or your own story of failure or your own story of wrestling with challenge and opportunity. Because when you share your own stories and your own fears in that visceral sort of a sense, you're offering your listeners vulnerability. You're offering them a view into who you are in a way that lets them relate to you. Because again, all of us know what it feels like to walk through this world, sometimes afraid, sometimes courageous, sometimes shrinking away, sometimes confused, sometimes terrified. And when you offer a little glimpse into your own navigation of all of those aspects of what it is to move through life, that vulnerability allows them to connect to you in a meaningful way. It allows them to see you as a real person. And that's the kind of leader we all want to follow. So resolution number two, engage with storytelling.